16 enthusiast, Lorton Collins. Yay! Yay! Now, Wilson, if anyone knows anything about 1960, it is you. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Yes. Um, I've been working around the whole subject in 1916 for the past 20 years. Yeah. I've been running a walking tour from the International Bar on that specific team. Uh, when I started it off, very few people were even interested in uh, the whole revolutionary period. In fact, it was a sort of a policy of don't mention the war for fear that our visitors from abroad, especially England, might be offended by it. But I saw that there was a very strong desire amongst our visitors and Irish people to come around and see these sites in Dublin. So, you know, since then, it's and grown. You've been doing these walking tours for 20 years. Yeah, I don't like to think too much about it in times <laughs> of decades, but yeah, all of a sudden, I mean, I started off, I was about Adrian's age, yes, and uh, all of a sudden I just became... You just realised I'm still doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but oh. look, it's great. It's a very enjoyable way of, um, of uh, talking about something that I really I'm passionate about. What? I'm very lucky to well, be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. You know, you're saying that Irish people are joining in on these tours, and I, I, I would assume in the next mm -hmm. 12 months there'll be even more Irish people. Yeah, you know, that, that kind of thrills me when so many Irish people come along, because you feel like you're you're, you're, you're doing something right then, because, uh, you know, it's not leprechauns and uh, uh, that sort of malarkey. So if Irish people don't like something, by God, you're going They'll to know that soon yeah. enough. And I love seeing Irish people's faces as they come along, knowing that they know it all, and then seeing them smiling and understanding that there's way more to it than they got um, when they were in okay. school. Exactly, yeah. Are, are you ever tempted, though, on these tours, mm -hmm. like, to bring along a little hand drill and pull a few holes in walls and say, these are the bullet holes <laughs> up there by... Do you know, there's no need for me to do that because there are bullet holes in the GPO, genuine bullet holes from 1916, and it's very, very easy for anyone to see them. You don't even have to come on my tour to see them. You just have to walk up O'Connell Street, and there they are in the columns on both sides because the British were using 18-pounder uh, uh, shells which were full of balls of lead and they there was hundreds of these in each one of the shells and they exploded with great force so they're all all over um, the columns they're very easy to spot there and they're not the only place I mean I'm not going to list all the places where there are yeah, holes, but there's but loads of them. if you want to see them you got to come on the tour you think after 100 years they would have filled them in yeah in a bit slow have you guys done any tours 1960 tours I haven't I have not either right well, well, I, I gig a lot in the I work working we were talking about this I, I work a lot in the inter like I International, in the yeah. international, yeah, I think they're pretty regularly, and I always see this. There's people meet and then they wander off, and I've always wondered where are they going. Yeah, we'll uh, see you know. Maybe next time you can join. It, international Bar you. is the oldest family-run bar in Dublin in oh. the O'Donoghue hands for uh, six generations, which is incredible. Uh, what percentage would would there be of Irish people doing that? You think um, you never do these things the, in your own city? No, you, you don't. Think it, these days, well, since the economic crash, without depressing people about that story in the year, but since then seven or eight years ago, we've had a huge interest in revolutionary Irish uh, history. So since then, maybe maybe 20-25% are Irish, which is great. Yeah, you know? God, I, mean, more than I, I never thought that would happen. Initially it was always Americans and people yeah. from Britain, but all of a sudden uh, the Irish are there. We do loads of school groups as well. The kids are great because yeah, you know, they're, they're like so sponges and mm. they want to ask the most bizarre questions like, you know, are these kids from um, real, real Dublin kids, right, recently, and one of them says, uh, what did Patrick Pierce have for breakfast? You know, like, <laughs> but I actually well, knew it was a he had a fry up. It's in one of the witness statements because he stayed in Sean T. of Gallic's house and uh, uh, their mother made them a fry up. So luckily I knew. Oh, you know. okay. Wow, so, yeah. God, you really do that. Sorry, a bit nerdy there. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. These Wise. are the things we need to know. Wise. People are fascinated with the stuff you tell them on this walking tour because there are things that we didn't even know. For example, they used to have daily ceasefire. Yeah, I can't believe it was Anthony. You didn't know Martin. No, fairness, right? Because <laughs> uh, he is very friendly. You are. What? Um, very <laughs> carry on. But they're in Stevens Green, where the irrepressible Countess Markovitz, who fought as a lieutenant for the Irish Citizen Army alongside Michael Mallon, uh, twice a day in both the Shelbourne Hotel, where the British were, and the College of Surgeons, where the Irish Citizen Army were, it was a ceasefire so that they could feed the little ducks in, in the duck pond. I think that's a beautiful story, you know. Obviously, it's a very violent event, and people yes. died. Mm. Uh, you know, over 500 people died. However, it, there's that kind of gentlemanly conduct that are really yes. thought was beautiful. They're all really young, weren't they? Like, Countess Markovitch was in her 20s, wasn't she in her 20s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the average age would have been 18 or 19. You had some kids 
They were who kids. Were 20, or, sorry, who were 12 and 13 who were involved in the rising. Four, four of whom were under the age of 18 who, who were killed in action. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the incredible thing about it is that these are people like you and me. They're people who had jobs. They're people who had lives. They had families. Mm-hmm. They had homes. And yet they were willing to go out that Easter Monday morning to fight for a, a better ideal, a better Ireland. Mm-hmm. And okay. that's what's okay. fantastic about it. Yeah. Well, well uh, over the last 100 years, if anybody sees a skip, lying around, um, you know it's going to attract hordes of people. Yeah. In 1916, yeah. as they were building barricades, people got the wrong idea. True, true. I mean, without a doubt, it's very well known that we had a huge amount of poor people who lived in Dublin. The worst slums in Europe were in this city. And when it all kicked off, Commandant Brown Whitmore, who was uh, unloading tables and chairs out onto the street from the Pillar Cafe, could hear shouts and a bit of a fight going on. They're giving away free furniture, someone shouted. And he had to go down <laughs> and remonstrate with the, um, with the poor people to say, here, look, that's me barricade, you know, bring it back. Uh, uh, because people just thought, this is the new republic, everything's uh, free for all. Yeah. And what, uh, of course, the, the looting was followed by burning, and it was one of the very difficult things that the lads had to deal with in the GPO, uh, the extent of the fires that were, were, were lit by people who, who, who they were trying to emancipate, you know. But like the that poverty in Dublin was endemic. And that came across in, in Rebellion yeah. uh, last night. You know, there was a comment by uh, Charlie Murphy's character, um, uh, Liz, I think it is, who, who, who said something like, we have the worst slums in Europe. And uh, Jimmy, who's uh, uh, the other male character, said, yeah, I know, we live in them, which yeah. I thought was kind of pretty cool. Well, okay, new book, February. Yeah, I have a new book coming out. It's called 1916, um, uh, The Rising Handbook. It's lists of people who were involved in the rising, lists of those who died, and, you know, it's sections in it on the sea and the rising. It, it was a labour of love for a long time, in all fairness, but if your grandparents or great-grandparents were in the rising, they're in this book. Okay? Wow. Yeah. Oh, loads of families we've said that. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank you very much. You're very good. Now, let's check in with Adrian in the kitchen.